I want to talk about a very powerful anti-inflammatory that um, you've never related to being an anti-inflammatory before. In fact, you probably think of this thing I'm going to talk about in a negative light, like something you should avoid, but it is a potent anti-inflammatory and the cost of it is pretty inexpensive. In fact, it's free. Ultraviolet radiation. When I even say the word UV radiation, you probably immediately think, wow, skin cancer, avoid this radiation. It's something very, very bad. But you have to realize this UV radiation, which is a part of the spectrum of energy from the sun. I mean, human beings, animals, and plants have coexisted with these rays for a very long time. So we have developed all sorts of adaptation to survive this radiation and use it to our advantage. In fact, when we're dealing with the sun's rays, ultraviolet radiation is the only part of that sun's energy that you can make vitamin D. And you know how important vitamin D is. It's the most important uh, vitamin for your immune system. It's the most potent anti-inflammatory, but it's created from ultraviolet radiation. Now, before you disagree and click off, hear me out because we're really talking about the dosage, okay? Small amounts of UV radiation. Now, I'm not gonna lie, too much of it, chronic exposure to UV radiation is really bad. It can increase your risk of melanoma. It can produce a lot of wrinkles. It can take the water right out of your skin and make your skin very dehydrated. It's all about the dosage of this radiation. But a small amount here and there, not the amount that it would create a burn, but maybe a very slight tan could be very, very beneficial. So let me first explain what makes up ultraviolet radiation. You have UVA, UVB, and UVC. Let's first talk about UVC and get that on the way because it doesn't really pertain to what we're going to talk about because you're really not exposed to UVC. UVC is generated by the sun and it gets trapped in the ozone layer. So it never ends up on earth but they do make UVC artificially in different wands that they use to kill certain microbes. And so it, it can definitely create some problems, believe me, but you don't have to worry about it from the sun. So now that leaves us with UVA and UVB. So what are the differences? Very simply, majority of this ultraviolet radiation is in the form of UVA, like 98.7. And it's the least damaging energy. But if you are exposed to much of it, it's the one that gives you the wrinkles, loss of collagen. It can even give you the aging spots, which by the way, if you have enough antioxidants in your skin, uh, that can protect you. Now let's talk about UVB radiation. Okay. That's really only like 1.3%. So that can give you a moderate amount of damage, like a little bit more than the UVA, but not if you're exposed to it in smaller doses. It's the UVB that makes the vitamin D, um, by interacting with cholesterol on your skin. So right there, we have two things that are like a negative, right? People think, oh my gosh, I need to pr protect myself against ultraviolet radiation and protect myself against cholesterol. Well, if you combine those two things, you get vitamin D, which is very, very important, especially since the majority of the population is deficient in the vitamin D. In fact, there's some reports, which I think I agree with, it's virtually impossible even to develop an autoimmune disease if you have sufficient vitamin D, simply because how vitamin D is so intertwined with every part of your immune system. Now, UVB radiation also is the one that triggers the melanocytes to make melanin, okay? Melanin is the, the pigment that uh, makes your skin darker, okay? And so people that are more fair complected have less melanin versus people with darker skin. And this pigment is interesting because it acts like a sunblock. It protects you against the UV radiation, the damaging rays that can affect uh, your DNA. So it's similar to a sunscreen or a sunblock. And so when you're exposed to the UVB, you trigger that cell that makes the pigment. So now you have adapted and you've actually become more uh, protected against that radiation. So that's called a hermetic effect where you're adapting to some small amount of stress uh, to then be stronger than you were before. The UVA does penetrate deeper than the UVB. It penetrates into the dermis, 
whereas the UVB only penetrates superficially into the epidermis. Now, again, both of these rays can produce DNA damage, they can produce cancer, they can produce um, a loss of collagen and um, wrinkles, et cetera. But it all depends on the dose and your level of antioxidants in the skin. But let's just go through some of the benefits to ultraviolet radiation in general, okay? That type of energy can give you an anti-inflammatory effect. Now, in large doses, it can create inflammation, but in smaller doses, it can actually reduce the cytokines that produce this inflammation. Cytokines are involved in the inflammatory process. The UV radiation can trigger a certain T cell. It's called the T regulatory cell, which is involved in decreasing your risk for autoimmunity, which is very, very interesting because there are a higher risk of developing autoimmune diseases the higher you live away from the sun, like in higher latitudes, like in the North, if you live away from the sun, you're more at risk for developing autoimmune diseases. You're more at risk of getting cardiovascular problems. You're even more at risk for developing certain types of cancer, which is pretty wild. Now, this partly has to do probably with the creation of the vitamin D, but there's other factors that go beyond this vitamin D effect. But just realize that the further away you are from the sun's direct energy, okay, like higher latitudes, the less ultraviolet radiation you're exposed to. Ultraviolet radiation also decreases the risk of getting TB and their associated skin disease that comes with it. In fact, the sun was considered the antidote for TB way back when they had the sanitariums. Now, there's some other effects from UV radiation that are not even associated with vitamin D. In suppressing the symptoms of eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, vitiligo, which is a loss of pigment, and even scleroderma. There's a lot of different uh, type of light remedies using UV uh, radiation, photobiomodulation therapy that they use in these skin disorders. And they use a very uh, narrow band UVB radiation to help in these conditions. But again, they're, they're not exposure for a long period of time. They're very small, short doses to create these interesting effects. There's even an anti-pain or a, they call it an opioid effect of this UV for pain. So the next time you're in pain, get out in the sun and see if it doesn't help you. The UV radiation also has an effect on the HPA axis. That's the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis in that it can help regulate cortisol which is a positive thing when you have stress and you can't live without it. It's a very important hormone, but UV does affect your endocrine system in a positive way if you have these small doses. UV radiation also increases nitric oxide. I've done videos on that of helping the inside of your arteries, but nitric oxide also can be very beneficial to your skin and act as a protective uh, mechanism against the UV radiation. UV also in short doses gives you reparative actions, probably because of the um, hermetic or stress effect and then the adaptation that comes after. UV radiation can elevate your mood. This is probably why people feel better in the sun. Also, it can increase and help balance serotonin in the body. So I just wanted to create this video to kind of show you the other side of ultraviolet radiation. It has a lot of positives. If you don't overdo it, it's not all bad. We don't just need to avoid the sun and use a lot of sunblock and wear hats and glasses all the time. A little bit can help you. And of course, out of all of these factors that are related to UV, I think vitamin D is probably on the top of the list as far as the most important. And I want to give you some more information on vitamin D itself in relationship to the sun. So I put that video up right here. Check it out.